This free step-by-step -step video comes to you directly from Haynes, creators of the world's best repair manuals. Fix your car or truck the right way with our accurate and reliable information at your side. You can complete more than 200 jobs on this vehicle when you purchase the complete online manual at Haynes.com. Before raising the vehicle, with the vehicle and gear in the parking brake engaged, remove the wheel center cover. Break the drive axle and hub nut loose with the socket and large breaker bar. Note, if the opening in the wheel is too small to accommodate your socket, wait until after the wheel is removed to loosen the nut. You can prevent the disc from turning by inserting a long punch into a cooling disc vein and letting it come to rest against the caliper mounting bracket when loosening. Block the rear wheels. Loosen the front wheel lug nuts. Raise the front of the vehicle and support it securely on jack stands. Remove the wheels. Remove and discard the drive axle and hub nut. Caution: There are a couple different suspension designs on this model vehicle, which may require additional components near the steering knuckle to be removed in order to remove the drive axle. On this model, we found the following method to be the easiest for removing the drive axles. Use a hub nut removal tool or soft-faced hammer to free the splines of the outer end of the drive axle. Remove the wheel speed sensor wiring harness interfering with the drive axle removal. Remove the control arm ball joint to steering knuckle pinch bolt and nut. Pride downward on the lower control arm to separate the lower ball joint from the steering knuckle. Swing the steering knuckle and hub assembly out and away from the vehicle until the end of the drive axle is free of the hub. Avoid any unnecessary strain on the drive axle CV joints when handling it. Place a drain pin underneath the transaxle to catch any lubricant that may spill out when the drive axle is removed. If you are removing the left drive axle, pry the inner drive axle CV joint out of the transaxle using a large screwdriver or pry bar positioned between the transaxle and CV joint housing. If you are moving the right drive axle, carefully pry the inner CV joint off the intermediate shaft using the same method, but with the pry bar positioned between the CV joint housing and intermediate shaft bearing support, be careful not to damage the drive axle oil seal. Support the CV joints carefully and remove the drive axle from the vehicle. If equipped, remove the washer from the outer CV end of the drive axle and save it for installation. If necessary, install a new oil seal on the transaxle case if it looks to be damaged. If you're reinstalling the old drive axle, install a new retaining clip on the axle end or intermediate shaft before installation. If installing a new drive axle, make sure there is a new one pre-installed. Lubricate the differential or intermediate shaft seal and splines with multi-purpose grease before installing the drive axle. Raise the drive axle into position for installation while supporting the CV joints. Make sure the opening of the retaining clip is facing down to ease insertion of the drive axle and prevent damage to the clip. Push the inner end of the drive axle into the transaxle or onto the intermediate shaft and make sure the spring clip locks into its groove. Once inserted, this can be double checked by grasping the inner CV joint housing and not the drive axle, then trying to pull it out to ensure the drive axle retaining ring is seated securely in the transaxle or on the intermediate shaft. Ensure that the washer removed from the old drive axle is installed on the outer CV end of the drive axle, if a new one was not provided. Apply a light coat of multi-purpose grease to the outer CV joint splines. Pull out on the steering knuckle assembly and install the stub axle into the hub. Insert the lower ball joint stud back into the steering knuckle, 
Then gently knock the lower control arm upward if need be. Install a new lower ball joint, pinch bolt, and nut. Warning, our 2010 and later model vehicle shown is equipped with RPO GNA front suspension. Your model vehicle's suspension design may be different, which means the torque specifications may also be different for your model. Be sure to correctly distinguish your model's suspension design and torque specs before continuing, and make the necessary torque spec adjustments to comply with your specific model. Tighten the nut on the bolt using the following steps while holding the bolt with another wrench. Step 1. Tighten the nut to 37 foot-pounds. Step 2. Loosen the nut 120 degrees. Step 3. Tighten the nut again to 37 foot-pounds. Step 4. Tighten the nut an additional 45 degrees. Attach the wheel speed sensor wiring harness clips onto the lower control arm and steering knuckle. Note, if your socket did not fit through the opening in the wheel when the hub nut was broken loose, tighten the hub nut now to the torque sequence described in a moment. Do this using the technique described previously by inserting a long punch into a disc cooling vein and letting it come to rest against the caliper bracket. Install a new drive axle hub nut and tighten it securely, but do not fully tighten it yet. Install the front wheels and lug nuts, then safely lower the vehicle. Tighten the drive axle hub nut using the following steps. Step 1. Tighten the nut to 111 foot-pounds. Step 2. Loosen it 45 degrees. Step 3. Tighten the nut to 185 foot-pounds. Install the wheel center cover. Tighten the wheel lug nuts to 111 foot-pounds. Unblock the rear wheels. After the job has been completed, check the transaxle lubricant level and if necessary, add some to bring it up to the proper level. 